Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking play. As always, thank you for coming back to the series. We're on episode 31 of our Football Club Barcelona Director of Football Challenge. And today we are going back to a familiar old haunt. We are going back to the Stad Velodrome in Marseille to play the team that we did the majority of FM17 with. We are playing, of course, Olympique Marseille. It's match day four of the Champions League. Our group is looking really, really interesting. Match day four, and we could secure progress on this match day. Um, things are not going well in the league, it has to be said. Um, we're going to have a look at all that in a second. Um, but yeah, let's get in and let's have a look at the Champions League group. And as I say, you can see, it's very, very interesting. So we have won all three of our matches yet Chelsea, Marseille and Feyenoord have all won one and lost two. So a win today guarantees us qualification and in fact if I've worked it out right a point would be enough to get a top two spot um, so it should be a successful video fingers crossed I think I said that in the last video. Um, so yeah they've all been taking points off each other Chelsea, Marseille, Feyenoord um, and we've just kind of smashed all of them which is really really pleasing after Marseille we play Chelsea at home and then we travel to Rotterdam to play Feyenoord it'll be an absolute travesty if we don't go through from this point on I'm sure we will uh, today we have Luis Suarez back uh, he came back for our last match um, we've got a couple of other injuries Bernard is still out and Usman Dembele is still out so it's not great we're a little bit light let's get into uh, the matches since the last video so since that defeat against Valencia, then you can see it's just not been brilliant. Um, we started off great. We smashed Marseille 4-0 at home. We had four different scorers. We just pummeled them. Uh, Elena, Paulinho, Rafinha and Denis Suarez all scored. Uh, you can see we made a fair few changes. We rotated. Uh, we played Denis Suarez and Rafinha. Moussa Dembele, Abel Ruiz came on as well. He did score, but it was ruled out for offside. Um, so it was a really good performance uh, that's put us in this commanding position in the group but we just have not followed it up at all you can see Bilbao away on the face of it nil nil not a bad result in San Marmej but not a great performance and we just couldn't break them down the fact that we we've lost so many attacking players as well is really hindering us we're not looking that threatening in front of goal at the minute uh, the cup against Lugo away, we lost 3-2 to a, they're in the lower mid-table in the Segunda um, and it's a famous night for them. Jorge Galan got a couple, could have had a hat-trick, he missed a chance late on. Jack Harper, a Scottish kid, used to play at Real Madrid, he's at Lugo in the game. Um, you can see again we made a lot of changes. We played Karavich in goal. We had Oriol Busquets making his debut. Uh, we had Abel Ruiz playing the full game and he did score. Uh, Inigo Martinez scored as well. But it's a really, really disappointing performance. Not even the great Leo Messi could help us out. He came on after about an hour and he did nothing. So really, really worrying. Thankfully, we've pulled it back to 3-2 uh, with Abel Ruiz's goal, which means we should be going through in the second leg it's quite a long way away you can see it all the way down there on new year's day as things stand so we should be pulling that one back and getting through but then at home to depot we just again we did okay we played well but we just couldn't get through uh, luis suarez did make his comeback didn't play well denis suarez was awful in the game um and it's just been really really poor for the last few games we really need to address this slump we've got Atletico Madrid coming up at home very very soon and um, then we've got a lot of winnable games before all the way down towards the end of uh, end of January beginning of February when we've got Sevilla and Real Madrid both away and Espanyol as well and um, that is going to be a really tricky patch and we've we've got to get points on the board quick and this is why just look at that we are 13th in La Liga 13th we're Barcelona and we are 13th in La Liga after nine games I mean this isn't after two or three games this is a quarter of the way through the season and we are 13th um, thankfully while we were drawing those two games um, nil nil other teams have also dropped points Valencia I think have drawn the last two as well I think Atletico Madrid have as well Real Madrid are the ones that have been making the ground up they're back up now level with the top two so the top three are all joint on 21 points we are closer to the relegation positions at the minute than we are to the top of the table 
this is not going well. We really need to turn this around. At the moment, I'm blaming the director of football for selling the likes of Delefeu and Di Maria and um, all the others. Who else did he sell? De Vrij, didn't he? And and I don't think he's replaced them very well. And injuries have not helped, of course. But it was a really, really poor transfer window, I think. And the symbol of that terrible transfer window at the minute is this guy, SMS, Sergei Malinkovic Savic. I, when I announced his signing, I was so, so pleased that we were getting him. I was really, really happy. But he's been awful so far. He really has been terrible. I mean, he's not played an enormous amount of games, but that's because he's not playing well when he's in the team. Um, so he, he's made seven starts with six substitute appearances. And he's, he's only got one assist. Um, he's got a 6.82 average. You can see his last five matches down here. He's only averaged a 6.72. He's just, he's just not been good. If we have a look at his overall form since joining the club. I mean, look, he's had one good game against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge on match day one of the Champions League where he got an assist. I think he got man of the match that day as well. Other than that, He's been absolutely rubbish. So here we go with the match preview screen. And you can see we are the favourites, despite our horrible run of form. I mean, look at that. Just one win in our last five. Um, just one defeat in five for Marseille, which was the game at, uh, at the Camp Nou, I believe. Um, so we are favourites. Referee, Italian guy. He's not shown any red cards yet in his four matches in the competition. And again, we just look at that that group that just there. Just got to focus on getting through the group now. Win today, and that is it. Um, win today, and that is probably the group one, not just qualified. So let's get to this. Let's pick our team. Here it is. We're going with Luis Suarez up top because he is back from injury, desperately trying to get him back up to match fitness, back into form. Uh, good news is Jasper Sillison is now back. Um, I was tempted to play him in this game, but it is a pivotal game in the group. If we don't win it, if we lose it, then we're right back in, in the mixer. Presumably Chelsea will beat Feyenoord. I think they beat them 5-1 on the last match day. So I just want to get the job done and then I can get Sillison into some games coming up in the, in the, uh, in the coming weeks and the final two group games. So we've got Ter Stegen in goal, Dinier Martinez, PK and Roberto at the back, Sergio Samper, Andre Gomez and Paulinho is coming into the middle, not playing as SMS today. Uh, as Moussa Dembele, uh, Usman is still out for another five or six weeks. Leo Messi, Luis Suarez up top. And we are desperate to get a morale boosting win on the board, especially an away win because they are not coming particularly frequently at the minute. Here are the two lineups then. You've got the Velodrome rocking behind. Um, in terms of my FM17, it's a very, very different squad to what we had there. Um, I think the only player there that we had at the start of the Marseille save was Florian Tovan. And I think he was still on loan at the time from Newcastle. And the deal was made permanent. Um, in real life, he has just hit a hat-trick in a 6-3 win for Marseille. And the day before I'm recording this, they just went and won 9 nil in the cup, did Marseille. So they have been goal crazy recently. Hopefully that doesn't translate into the game. Um, I'm it, I'm toying at the minute. The, the formation, the system is currently on, it's currently on life support. I am really, really thinking that I'm going to have to change something up at the minute because something is really, really not working at the moment. So... Um, and Jonathan Steele, one of one of our community, he emailed me over a, a little while ago some tactics. Um, you may have noticed, Jonathan, um, I don't know if I've credited you before or not, but your defensive one is being trained at the minute. Um, but I'm tempted if things keep going like they are, I'm thinking I'm going to bring in your attacking one because you say it brings good results and I think it would suit the squad. So we're going to say Marseille have lost two of their last three games. I expect us to pile on the misery. Let's hope that works. We need some goals. We need the points. Come on, boys. Forza Barca. So 
So the camera zooms in as the players come out onto the pitch and we are ready to go. We get the game underway. Come on, boys. Show me some fighting spirit. Show me what you are made of. Dimitri Payet will take this free kick. So we've had a big injury already for Marseille. Luis Gustavo has gone off injured. He had a little orange injury when he came um, when he came into the match. Um, and he's lasted five minutes and he's gone off. Um, here's a corner for Marseille. It goes out to Tovan. Don't let him shoot on his left foot. He does, but Tostegan pulls off a brilliant save. Tips that superbly over the bar. Marseille with the bright start here. They need the points badly, don't they? They're playing our 4-2-3-1 that, uh, that we often played, well, that we always played on FM17 as well. Um, incidentally, if you're looking at starting a new game, Ligue 1 is really good challenge. Some Playing as someone like Marseille would be fantastic. I highly recommend it. They've got a really good squad. They've got a lot of money behind them now as well. And if you can get them playing good football, it would be a really cool save to do to try and topple PSG. Basically, playing as anyone but PSG in France is the, uh, is the obvious, isn't it? Here's Andre Gomez. Goes for a speculative shot, and that's poor. It's, it's generally all... I mean, nothing's happening, but it's generally all Marseille at the moment. As Vada shoots... Oh, I thought that was going in. I thought that was arrowing into the bottom corner. You can see we've got the scores um, down at the bottom on the in-between screen as well. Uh, it's nil-nil everywhere at the minute. Um, what I'll do after the match, I'll show you all the groups after four match days, because I'm guessing we've got some teams eliminated, some teams qualified by now. So we'll have a look at all those. Here's Moussa Dembele, pulls it back across to Messi, it's a good save by Mandanda, that is a really really good save from the veteran keeper. Um, in that game I mentioned earlier that when they won 6-3, I think it was against Metz, um, Mandanda made some amazing saves as well. Oh, Messi's hit the bar with a free kick, that was like an arrow. That just clipped the bar. We gave him a little encouraged shout out about seven or eight minutes ago before this string of highlights and it really seems to have kicked their, kicked their asses a little bit. But here are Marseille in possession. Cristante, he's the one that came on for Luis Gustavo. Forward for Tovan. Germain out to Dimitri Payet. Cristante again and they go back but suddenly a ball forward to Payet. It's giving them a bit of space and Germain with the header into Stegen tips it over. So the game is livening up now. The last 10 minutes have been action-packed. Chances at both ends. Hopefully we can make the breakthrough. I feel if we get one, we'll go on and win the game. I think if Marseille score first, they could easily go on and get the points. But we've lost possession here. The confidence of the squad is really, really poor at the moment, I think. Two nil-nil draws in the league and a defeat at a second division club in the Cup have not gone down well, really. And... We've got to pick up league form, otherwise we're not going to see this season out. But that is a great ball from Messi to Sergio Roberto. And it's pulled back for Luis Suarez. And that is a super, super save again from Mandanda. What do we have to do to get past the guy today? Vada in midfield. Ramsalar. Germain. Oh, lays it off to Payet. Played across. Headed down. Oh, and it's in. Ramsalar has scored for Marseille. I think it came off the post and went back in off Marc-Andre to Stegen. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Germain here, good ball back to Payet. Played across, headed down by Germain and it does, doesn't it? That's gone down as Ramsalar's goal. That's an OG for me. Half time then and we are 1-0 down in France. Marseille lead through Ramsalar's late goal in that half. You can see it's 0-0 in Rotterdam, Feyenoord and Chelsea. So as it stands, it's Marseille taking control of second spot in the group. And our remaining two games suddenly become a lot more, a lot more important at the moment. Uh, I don't know. I, I, we're going to break with tradition. We're going to go assertive and say, show me something else in the second half. It's not been good enough. We've not created enough. We need to do something in this second half because... I'm starting to lose all faith in the system, in the tactic, in the team at the moment. It's not a good place to be right now. So Valérie Germain gets the game underway for Marseille. Can we turn this around in the second half? Can we get the points that we need? Uh, Liverpool leading 2-1 against Espanyol. They've come from behind in that game. Here's Payet, Ramsalar, the goal scorer. Cuts it in to Germain and to Stegen called into action straight away in the second half. I can only see one team scoring at the moment and they are not wearing red and blue. Here's Germain. 
on the halfway line to Payet. He's going to get tackled over by Sergio Roberto. He is Messi. Come on, lads. What can you do? Leo Messi to Luis Suarez. In for Moussa Dembele. And Moussa Dembele, the former PSG trainee, has equalised for Barcelona. That is a huge goal for us. That's a huge sigh of relief for us. Messi drove forward. It's the first time we've really threatened. And Mandanda couldn't keep it out. Come on. Just on the hour mark then, two substitutions to be made. We're bringing Ivan Rakitic on for Sergi Samper, who has been booked. The last thing I need in this last half an hour is to be going down to 10 men. And uh, Rafinha coming on for Andre Gomez in central midfield as well. Leo Messi is looking really, really tired. It's unlikely that he's going to see out the game as well. I'm probably going to look to take him off next. Um, let's hope these substitutions work. Here's Luca Digne. Switches the play to Messi, just about gets there. Rafinha. Luis Suarez has been pretty anonymous as well at the moment. Here's Moussa Dembele to Paulinho. Messi. And Dembele's in. Oh, he scuffed the shot. What a chance. El Estondo to take this throw. So, um, Carlos Lenya has come on for Leo Messi. And Rafinha's gone out onto the right wing as the inside forward. Alenia into central midfield. Here's Payet though, we've got some defending to do. In it goes looking for Germain, glancing header, no power though. To Stegen, he's as easily saved. So it, it's level in all games. I think it's still nil-nil in Rotterdam. So as it stands at the minute, we are going to be going through. Um, and we would just need a kind of a point to, to win the group. Probably not even that, to be fair. Um, but it's been another average performance it's a little bit better than we've been doing recently but it's not been spectacular and we could be in trouble here as Metroglu has it he's just come on Dimitri Payet runner on the left here's Cristante Vada got a lot of width here here's Horta carrying an injury but he's got past his man it didn't look like he was carrying an injury there did he and Tostegen with a vital intervention Metroglu had a free header if Tostegen hadn't got there Come on, Mark, what are you doing? Why are you time wasting? I need the win. Here's PK. Rafinha. Come on, Elenia now, what can you do? A lot of creativity in this kid. Plays it down the line to Dembele. Pulls it across to Suarez. That is what we needed. Luis Suarez in his second game back from injury. Puts us in front. That's more like it, boys. Carlos Elenia heavily involved. Should have played him from the start, shouldn't I? Carlos Elenia future of the team Dembele plays it across and Suarez sweeps it in Lucas Dinier to take this throw here's Elenia Rakitic Paulinho goes for the goal and Mandanda tips it over still goalless in Rotterdam which does surprise me really thought after that 5-1 at Stamford Bridge that Chelsea would win here's Elenia looking for space to shoot and he's dragged it well 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 wide so if we just pause it here you can see as things stand, we will not only be qualified, we'll have won the group with two games to spare. Um, just double check the latest scores. Um, oh, Lazio have come from behind against 10 men. Not a surprise there, is it? Uh, Chelsea have scored in the 82nd minute. Chelsea have scored, even though we're in the 80th. Um, right then. So Chelsea have scored. Oh, <laughs> okay then. So Chelsea are now on to six points. And it is all of a sudden, we need a point again to win the group. But we are through. We are through as things stand. We have qualified. Four wins from four. But can Marseille change it around here? It's Metroglou. And to Stegen with a big, big save. Keeps it at 2-1. Keeps us on 12 points and a perfect record. And Rafinha now. Can we get forward in support of the counter? Go on, Rafinha. Pulls it across to Dembele. Got Lucas Digne on the outside. Here he is. Lucas Digne. Clips it into Suarez. Rakitic to take this corner. Goes to Alenia again. And Alenia. Oh. I think that hit Mandanda rather than him knowing anything about it. That just came through a crowd of players. That had just been a few inches further to the keeper's right. He was beaten all ends up. Same corner routine again. I really don't know why they do this all the time. But, ah, he's offside. What a ball in from Elenia. What a little cross in that was. But it doesn't count. And I don't know why we've seen a replay of it. It's not set to do it. What a cross in that was, though. And Suarez's header was disallowed. Don't know why it showed a replay of that. That's bizarre. 
Um, Chelsea then are on six points. It looks like they're going to hold on there. Um, so after losing their first two group games, they've come back with two straight wins. Can Marseille grab a late goal here? They've got a corner. We're over the four minutes. Payet suddenly looks urgent. Takes it. Oh, and Cristante got his head to it. To Stegen. Keeps hold. And he throws it out. And there it is. The final whistle apparently brings this absolute classic to an end. It was a good game. Classic is probably a little bit uh, ambitious. But we've won. We've got the points. We're four wins from four. We are through. We are pretty much going to win the group. I don't think there's too much danger of that. Absolutely great. We're back to winning ways on camera after that horrific game against Valencia. And we are just calmly going to say, you've done brilliantly to come back and win that. I'm proud of you. Need to G them up. Need to really pump up their confidence coming into this massive run of fixtures that we've got coming up now. Whew. Relief is the overriding emotion. Okay, guys, let's have a look at all the Champions League groups then after four match days. And you can see Group A, Real Madrid are currently top. They are as good as through. Three wins and a draw. They are clear of Shakhtar. Um, it's a shootout between Shakhtar and Leipzig as to who goes through. Um, you can see we've got qualif qualifiers from the next three groups. Manchester City from Group B. And then it's going to be pretty much a shootout between Benfica and AC Milan for second in that group. Monaco already through in Group C. Uh, they are closely trailed by Atletico Madrid, Moscow. It's actually really close there, isn't it, in Group C? All three of those can still finish second. Man United then have seen off Bayern at the moment, um, but it looks like Bayern will be joining them in the next round. Liverpool and Hoffenheim are tied on seven points each in Group E. And then we've got Espanyol a point further back. And in the other groups, um, the only other team with four wins from four are Beifau Bay, Borussia Dortmund, and they are through as well. Uh, Krasnodar and Lazio are on six points each so it is pretty much a straight shootout between them two for second and third. Juve and PSG are tied on nine points in Group G. I think they've beaten each other. I think they've won their home games um, and it's looking like those two will go through and then our group is still alive in terms of second place as well. Chelsea not home and hosed yet in second place. They come to Camp Nou next. We could put a real dent in their ambitions. Um, I will be going out to still win that game. I will be rotating depending on who's tired and who's injured and everything. But we are through. We need a point for definite to win the group. Um, but all that matters is that we are through. So that is going to be the end of this video, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. In terms of the next video, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do at the moment because I'm recording this on a Wednesday and it's probably going to be a couple of days until I record again. And there's possibly going to be quite a bit of playtime in between. So it may be a case of we end up in the new year. It could even end up being as far down as this Sevilla Real Madrid area here. We could be all the way down there before I record again. Um, I'd like to do the Classico on camera, but I am aware it's at the start of February and it's only a couple of weeks before the last 16 of the Champions League. So it depends how the league form's been going. I might do a video before that, um, but again, not going to promise which match it's going to be because I don't know where I'm going to be when I next record. But we're back to winning ways. We got a couple of goals. We got a big, big win. Our first in four games. Got to smash that like button for me, guys. Hit subscribe as well and turn on the notifications. Get involved in the comments as always. Let me know about the tactic. Should I just persevere with it now that we've won again? Should I stick with it? Other than Atletico at home, we've got a lot of winnable games coming up. So I'll probably stick with it for a few games, I think. Let me know what you think. Um, and thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you for episode 32 really soon. Bye-bye.